we've all been lied to so much by the media and by the politicians that we don't know anymore what to believe, if it's true or not. Like, for instance, the atrocities being done in the Ukraine. First of all, you must understand that there are not just two parties, Russia versus Ukraine, but that there is also a third party of the enemy within, like the Nazi Templar Wagner Group here, for instance, who are in fact behind the massacre in Bucha. So Russians and Ukrainians will hate each other and wage war with each other. This third party is the octagon of the Nazi Templars of pharaonic origin and their base Switzerland in the Alps, who always try to set up peoples against each other so they can have all the power afterwards, just as they've done in all wars. And Mr. Putin and his Wagner group are both part of the octagon, which I explain in this video here, entitled Black Prince of Prussia and Pharaoh's People's Product, PPP. Here you can see the title in the same channel. So this picture here is taken from the Ukraine war and those who say, well, but I don't see any blood. Well, the blood has run into the sand here, 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 and here. So, first of all, are Russians capable of all the atrocities being shown by the media? Well, the answer is a yes, a plain and affirmative yes. The Ruskies have done the same in Afghanistan and Chechnya, murdering millions. And their specialities are rape, mutilation, looting, and destroying all the houses of the civilians in the middle of winter, just as it is happening now in Bucha, Kiev, Ukraine. And I'll quote for you. Kasan Bayev was the single surgeon for almost 80,000 people during the Chechen wars. At one point during the conflict, he performed 67 amputations and eight brain operations in a 48 hour period. He was also known for treating both Chechen and Russian soldiers. And I read the book in French of this good man about 20 years ago. And Kassan Bayev said, the worst Russian soldiers were the Kontraktniki, who were real butchers murdering women and children. Kontraktniki is the Russian word for contractor or mercenaries, like the Wagner Group. And the Kontraktniki are typical octagon of the Nazi Templars. I was in Russia in the 80s during the Cold War, and I can only confirm that this is how the Ruskies are, with some minor exceptions. I was even inside this building here, going in from the back side. There you can see the building. These doors were all closed and I went in from the back side. I suppose these doors are always closed from this side. And I walked through here from this side and I went in in the middle on the other side. 
and they never found out who I really was. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't want to pronounce it, you know, this way, but um, if you want to talk about dumb, well, you can find them here. Let's let's say that, you know. Just go and see the YouTube channel Stop a Douchebag. How senselessly aggressive and without any sense of justice nor conscience these Ruskies behave. So here you can see them fighting, you know, for, for no reason at all. It's it's incredible, you know, if you look, if you watch this. And if you see this, you know, so this is the the channel name, SADB World. And if you, you know, the architect attacks. And if you see the, the you know, the senseless violence, you know, of the Ruskies, we well, understand that they're quite capable of all the, you know, the um, the horrible things going on in the Ukraine, uh, rape and everything. I mean, you you can see it happening in Russia, you know, and this this is just the tip of the iceberg. Like, well, you 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 can see the mentality. Um, well, of course, they're not all bad, but there are very many who are very bad. You can see this in this on this channel. I mean, these guys filming, they're doing a good job, you know. They're they're good Russians, I would say, but they're really far many many you know violence and evil people walking around there which you can see on this channel you know and this is happening you know this has nothing to do with the ukraine so this is like a uh, in a, in a neutral perspective by russians themselves and then if they can't win the fight they start lying and they slip into the victim's role just as I've always seen in Switzerland, by the way. And yes, there are, there are Swiss minorities all over Russia. God knows how many there are today. And here, for instance, and if you, if you think it's only the men who are violent, well, you're mistaken. Uh, the women are just as violent. I mean, this channel is, you can see, Russian violence all over and then they lie you know like this woman here she then she said she said her kid had a heart condition do you believe her a children's doctor almost runs over a mother with a child I showed that in my other video you know they, they just run over children they don't care and now they're doing this in the Ukraine uh, uh, here oh you, you can violent women it's it's incredible I mean you, you you would never have seen this anywhere else, I think. Yeah, they, 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 they try to run over people. This guy is escaping like, you know, this trying to run over a woman with a child here. Uh, it's just, it's, if you want to see Russian violence, well, go and see this channel. And, and, and look how they look, you know, these women. They start screaming and, and they get physical. Look at this, you know. They get really physical. It's it's not only the man, and then they try to behave like a, like a mafia boss and all this. They pull out guns and baseball bats and knives and oh, it's it's incredible. So yes, the Ruskies are capable of all the things they they are being accused of now in the Ukraine. They are capable. Look at all the fighting. This is now. This is filmed by Russians themselves, by good Russians. Look, guy pulling a gun here where it says POW. Um, they're capable of it. You can see it. You know, th this is going on in Russia, you know. Violence for nothing. And then they lie, you know. And the police hardly comes, you know. Nobody cares. And it's so corrupt that many have, you know. They have a lot of uh, fingers inside the police, a lot of mates inside the police. You know, they, they all try to run over people and 
because I just drive over the pave the pavement, you know, the sidewalk. It's chaos. So I understand the pharaohs have enough of these people, you know. And this is what's going to happen, you know, it's going to be a reset on Russia. The aim of the Ukraine war is more Russia than it is the Ukraine. And it will come, you know, the whole world is going to hate them now. So here you can see in the video section of the Stop a Douchebag World how disgustingly violent the Ruskies behave. See here it's all, they come with their big cars, you know, it's, it's going too good for them. So they need some economic sanctions and a reset. I totally agree with Pharaoh on this one, eh? Look, they're all fighting over nothing and, and here fighting. And they always aggress the um, the weaker ones. I mean that that's that's real rusky, eh? They they pull guns and they they uh, they attack the weaker the the weak ones like children and you, know, you see fighting. Uh, look how aggressive they look. You know, look at that. It's all about it's all fighting and macho stuff here. And, uh, you know, if you punch them one time, you know, they're, they're down and they don't get up anymore, you know, because these guys who are filming, they're like wrestlers and, and real fighters, but they, they don't really go into it, you know, they, they behave well, you know, the ones filming, they're young kids and look, it's all aggressions and fighting to try, you know. The Russians try to run these kids over, and, and that's how they behave. They, well, they think they're just kids, you know, and but these kids are, are real good wrestlers, and they behave, you know, they, they don't end up in violence, and uh, yeah, even this one, even pulling a knife here, the police comes, or well, they don't do anything here, the police, they, they keep on hitting the police, <laughs> this one here, down here. The police are standing there and he keeps on hitting and they don't care. And look how aggressive the women are. Look at this one here. Look at the girly here. And here, it's not a girly. They, they just attack the man, you know. They know that when the man, they, they retaliate. You know, they, they, they got everything on, the, everybody on their necks, you know. You know, they even take, this one even takes the child out, you know, as a, you know, to slip into the victim's role, like. This this guy's extremely aggressive. This one over nothing. That's yeah, another fight. This is Russia. You know they even attack a guy here with a uh, with a crutch. The Ruskies they like to attack the weak and the defenseless. You can see that here, like kids. Yeah, another attack here, and, and they all pretend they all come with a big. Mercedes, they're big gangster cars, and it's 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 a it's a mafia-led country, and they need a reset. And I say, go ahead, Pharaoh, go ahead, give them a bloody reset. Eh? It's enough. You gave them everything, you know. They they're gonna have they have everything: McDonald's and big Mercedes and Volkswagen, American cars, and what they do, you know, they behave like monkeys. Look at this one here. They behave like monkeys, especially the women. Look at them. It says woman. Well, we know what that is. It's a pink list killer, probably. And they know, you know, the women, they know that as a man, you can't retaliate because the women can hit a man. That's that's what Europe is like. And if you're in a man, he cannot retaliate. Here, look, another fight here. And the kids here, that they're just defending. Here, another fight, you know, just a lot of aggressive energy for nothing. Over nothing, really. Yeah, cops coming. Here, yeah, fight. Women, very aggressive. So this, this is Russian TV. Real life. Yeah, yeah fights here, fights here. I mean... Go ahead, Pharaoh. This time I agree with you. Give him a reset. You know, just squeeze him down and, you know, they, they're, they got, they've gotten too arrogant. You look at this woman here, aggressive fight, aggressing a man. And he knows he, he can't, he can't do anything back. 
You know, he goes to prison. Yeah, again, you know, these kids are okay. Look, look at the big, the big one hey, attacking him. You know, for over nothing. And these women aggressive. They say, "Oh, I've got connection in the uh, in the KGB, like and all." The, every time, hear this too. It's such an aggressive territory. Russia is. You know, the woman attacking the, the guys here, this this one. Oh, you know, look look at my clothes, you know. I'm I've got connections in the parliament. I know Mr. Putin, you know. This is yes. He hit they hit the young guys here, they they don't do anything back. Give more give my reset. Finish these Russians, finish it. You know, there goes Pharaoh, you go ahead. Yeah. This this is real life, real life TV, and there are very few Russians who stand up, very very few. So Pharaoh has to do it himself. The NATO has to do it, and uh, I totally agree with it. I totally agree. And it's well, it goes on and it goes on. You know, it's um, it's really sickening. So go and have a look if you want to know if it's real. You know, the atrocities uh, the Russians are doing on Ukrainian children and women. And it is true. If you've seen this here, Stop a Douchebag World, you know it's true. They can do it. They love violence over there, apparently. Well, they love violence. Well, give them violence, hey? Go ahead, Pharaoh, give them violence. I mean, they're, they're begging for it, hey? They're really begging for it. And the whole world hates them now. So go ahead, world. Uh, here are the proofs, people. Um, these are the proofs, what they're capable of, you know. I mean, here they still sort of, well, they don't give a damn about any laws eh, in Russia, you know, but uh, they're still some somehow tied to the laws and the, uh, and the consequences of their actions. But... You can see if you give these guys, you know, in a Ukrainian town with all the weapons and you, and you put them there, these Russian soldiers, you know, they just they just go berserk and they well, like it's happening now. This is the mentality. It's, it's, I, I, th I think this is really shocking. It's a really shocking YouTube channel. Uh, these are things you see nowhere else in the world, really. Roskis did it, people. They did it. It's true. But it's not Russia, Ukraine in this war. There's the enemy within, in between, who puts a lot of um, oil on the fire. I understand that Pharaoh has enough of these Roskis who need to be re educated with a reset afterwards as humanity is pharaoh's bread race human livestock so i agree with you pharaohs just go and have a reset on the ruskies so pharaoh had their teutonic putin send rusky soldiers into the ukraine during the coldest part of winter in order to delete them without proper logistics. I'll read it for you. Why Russia's logistics failed? Well, I'm explaining that to you. It was deliberate and it is a trap. It has to do with the reset. Not enough food, being hungry all the time. I read it for you here. Russian soldiers loot Ukrainian shops. Frozen toes, frozen bodies, shivering the whole time. With old fashioned conventional weapons and World War II era tanks against NATO's high tech smart weapons. So here you see the drones and the high-tech portable missile launchers of NATO by the English and Americans and all this. 
And these are really old fashioned tanks, you know, World War II era almost. Uh, I noticed the cannons are not even uh, shock absorbed, you know. Uh, they are absolutely have no satellite support like an Abrams tank for the shelling. You know, like an Abrams tank, you know, every shelling, it, uh, it, it, it's, it's a bullseye, you know, because it's all satellite linked. These are absolutely not. I have no chance at all. This is, this is all scrapyard stuff. There's no more, no more place in a modern warfare. The Russian soldiers are just cannon fodder and they know it now, but it's too late. They were trapped into it because Mr. Putin and his pals of the World Economic Forum in Switzerland, they wanted a reset and there's no way back either. So they say it, we are cannon fodder. They know it. So it's the lie by Pharaoh that wins over all entire armies. You know, they believed Mr. Putin, but he lied, of course. It's Vladi Dalaya, and he's part of the Teutonic Knights. They're trapped into Pharaoh's lies. And with firing squads behind the Ruski soldiers' backs to eliminate the deserters. Thus, Ruski soldiers trapped by the octagon, knowing some liters of looted vodka would do the rest under these conditions and lead to terrible atrocities on the local population which was exactly what Pharaoh wanted. And as you know now through my videos that this guy was Swiss. He was an ethnic, he was a Swiss American general and president. And of course, a member of the Swiss octagon going for all key positions. And he said, you will not find it difficult to prove that battles, campaigns and even wars have been won or lost primarily because of logistics. Well, yeah, it says in military officers academies that with a good army you can win the battle. But with good logistics you win the war. Armies win battles but logistics wins wars. To which I'd like to add one more thing, which is even more important. And that's the signaler call, the radio man, scouts gathering intel, intel from the air to know where the enemy is, how many there are, direction of movement and what they're doing. This is even more important than the logistics. The intel passed on through the signaler core has destroyed armies hundred times the size of your own. It's really not hard to understand where the Ukrainians get all their intel from and the flash in the US Army INSCOM logo is the symbol for the signaler core incorporated into the US Army Intelligence and Security Command. So without the US signaler core, the Ukrainians could never have destroyed so many, so much Ruski armor in such a miraculous way. So here is the flash in the middle of the Army Intelligence and Security Com Command, the INSCOM. This is the flash of the signaler call, because with the electronics, everything has become more complicated and there's not just one signaler call anymore. It's integrated in the whole thing together with the intelligence gathering and all that. This is a Sphinx, of course, the Army Intelligence. It's all pharaonic. Eh? 
This looks like to be a aristocratic lord with his wig. And uh, this, of course, is the, um, the seven arrows of the Statue of Liberty, which are the concept of three and the concept of four, which I've already explained to you. And this comes from the New World Order Horizontal Rule, the Republican Rule, uh, from the, um, from the um, uh, Liberté, uh, Liberté, Fraternité, Égalité. The, uh, the Statue of Liberty, it's from Liberté, Fraternité, Égalité, the, um, from the French uh, Revolution, and uh, well, which was given from the, from, by, the, by the French Freemasons to, the, uh, to their, their biggest horizontal rule ever made uh, in America. And this is the uh, the torch of the Statue of Liberty, of course. Here's a key, like in the Vatican, the logo of the Vatican and the Swiss banks, the Swiss UBS bank. Uh, it's, it's full, and here you got the torch again of the Statue of Liberty. And uh, here again, the two keys here of the uh, the Vatican. I think that this is exactly the Vatican, almost the Vatican logo. Here it says 7075 instead of 76. That's interesting, right? Of course, this is the Vesica Piscas, you know, the two forming an oval in the middle. The two rings here, that means we are a chain, like a chain of command or an organization, like in where we go one, we go all. You know, this is this, is this you know, by the Knights Templars, uh, one for all and all for one. That's what it means. You know, they are very, very organized and they stand all behind each other. Whereas humanity, you know, it's all f everybody for himself, you know. Here again is the um, the flashes of the Signaler Corps, which is called, I think this is in it's English, Signaler Corps. In America, it's just called Signal Corps. Uh, but I prefer the, uh, the name Signaler Corps. Mr. Putin, of course, knows this, where the Ukrainians got their, get their air reconnaissance from, from the NSA and the US Army Intelligence Command. But as he's part of the Teutonic Octagon, he plays major league with his Octagon pals commanding the US INSCOM, thus deliberately betraying the Russian people for the New World Order goals. So the miraculous victories by the Ukrainians over this Russian, all-powerful, scary Russian army is due to the US signaler call. Simple as that. Why do you think Vladi was best pals with Donald? Huh? It seems like Putin saying, hey, you see that young chick behind? That's my wife, and she could be my granddaughter. Trump replying, yeah, that's why I always got them from Eastern Europe as well. See what you mean, pal. Gangsters with young girls, pyramids and Egyptian palm trees where they all come from. Typical pharaonic nobility. Just look at Trump's eyes. See how they're moving? Right, left, right. And yes, also atrocities committed against the ethnic Russians in Ukraine's Donbass region which you can witness in the channel of Patrick Lancaster here. And especially these videos here are quite bloody and filmed right after the impact of cluster bombs. So here you can see there here, massive cluster bomb, uh, quite bloody videos. Here's some more about cluster bombs here, cluster bombs. 
I see a lot of bloody people, eh? People are bleeding, I mean. Right. Yeah, a lot of dead bodies everywhere. Well, you can already see them here. So, also in the Donbass region, uh, the people are being shelled. But who can really tell who shot the bomb or launched the missile? As it's all Russian made bombs and missiles anyway and launch from a 30 kilometer distance or so. Therefore, I tell you that the enemy within of Putin's Nazi Templar Teutonic Knights and his Wagner boys did it to spark the hatred between nations, which has always been the objective of the third party, also called the Third Reich. The third party, you see, das Dritte Reich of the enemy within and octagon of the Knights Templars. So the third party or the Third Reich their aim is to have the other two parties fight each other, like two nations, two peoples, two religions, two races, or whatever. This is what Pharaoh's aristocracy, this is their strategy, which they have always been following. And it goes on and it goes on. So this is interesting. This is a a website to stop Wagner Group and its crimes. As I already told you, Wagner, it's a reference to the Nazis, which I've shown you in my film about the um, the Black Prince in the same channel. So you can read it here. I like this website. I mean, they're doing something, apparently. I hope so. I, I've got a good feeling about this. And um, isn't this uh, Chinese, this, this thing here, Vion, Wyon? Hmm, interesting. You know, the Chinese are far more peaceful, you know, than you th I think the Russians are behind it. It's all Julie Witskovskaya. Some good Russians probably had to flee the country, eh? Uh, as they speak, or it must be somebody who speaks, uh, understands Cyrillic and uh, Russian language. Otherwise, you can't find all these things. And pictures like this, this is what the Wagner Group, what they're doing. It says, Wagner Group, or how to cure plague with cancer. Hmm. It's, it's a mafia. Oh, they having it's white supremacism, Nazi tattoos, mafia style business model. Model. So they got Nazi tattoos, and Mr. Putin is shouting hysterically, "Oh, the Nazis! The Nazis! The Ukrainians are the Nazis!" I mean, look at this. Wakey, wakey, people. The Nazis are inside. It's the Third Reich. The Third party you know they do false flag operations you know like the shelling in the donbass that they're behind it they're behind it and also in butcher you know the um, the atrocities uh, it gets all on the back of simple russian soldiers who, who didn't do it you know they did it they're doing it all over you know, look how they're performing these guys you know with swastikas and all this i told you mr putin is a teutonic knight yeah, it's all Knights Templars, it's Octogon. So this is very interesting. I, um, I'll see if I can contact them. So people, these are the real Nazis and these are the ones who are behind the shelling, both in the Donbass region because nobody knows who really did it. I mean, 
you you can't you can't tell me that eh? there's nobody who who can really say like oh you know it's it's like 30 30 miles away you know when the missiles are being launched come on you you can't know it it's just speculate speculations and the wagner group is apparently also behind the uh the butcher massacres and and uh, this is octagon this is templar stuff they are they have no human feelings and they've been doing this for at least thousand years in the form of the octagon and of course before that we had the romans and the and the, and the pharaohs and which is the same group or the same origins but this octagon has been terrorizing humanity since a uh, thousand years and their base is switzerland so watch my video the swiss beast home of the devil looking at pharaoh's politicians the best way for a coward and a liar to beat his enemies or to defeat humanity is to have the enemies fight each other i quote when two fight the third one takes advantage and then you take over control you see the two dogs here are fighting the dogs of war ukraine russia and the third one takes everything he's quietly eating this is what's happening when everyone is dead and exhausted you take the women and slave the children and install a ruling system to control the land and its people here you see these two are fighting one and two russia number one ukraine number two they're fighting and here's three number three he takes it all he takes all the treasures all the money all the wealth all the power all the women three because it's the third reich like putin with his wagner group killing both ukrainians and russians so these ones continue to fight each other they have already done the same thing during the second world war and the nazis won the war they're still there we can see it it's wagner it's putin and they're all over they're in the, they are having control over the us the ukraine europe the whole world and they always use the same pharaonic technique number three the third reich mr hitler he didn't die in 1945 you know, now he's dead but it's still going on you know the paperclip organization or the paperclip project they all came into the us all the nazis and in russia was the same thing the nazis went to the us and to russia same thing nazis won the war number three the third reich they win it all this is the true nature of the third reich third empire and enemy within who have the other empires or groups of people fight each other the third reich is back now with their old Nazi names like Wagner, who was Hitler's favorite Nazi composer, who lived in Switzerland, the base of the Nazi Templars. Funny name, huh? For a Russian fighting force, reminding you that the Nazis were the biggest enemy of the Russian people who butchered about 25 million Russian men, women, and children. Putin is a Nazi and an enemy of the Russian people. The problem is that humanity has been reset and followed up by a preset with a fixed binary system in their heads which only allows them to see the ukraine war 
as a soccer match between two parties in a binary system and only saying Putin is the bad Nazi versus saying that only Zelensky is the bad Nazi. Humanity is trapped into the yin yang preset of dualistic awareness, also called the soccer match dilemma and its conception of only two parties. There are, in fact, three parties the people, Putin, and Zelensky. And both are Nazis, folks. Both Putin and Zelensky. And they're waging a war against the Ukrainian and the Russian people, framed into the hooliganism of the Freemason Ordo Abgao. This is why the Freemasons have the black and white binary system in their checkerboard configuration because they know that these are the rules and conditions of the playground here on earth and it is in fact a soccer field where two parties are playing the blacks against the whites putin against zelensky with the spectator masons here watching the soccer game and the people bleed that's why the red around it and this is a throne here you can see of course the square and compass the circles here stand for the compass, the, all these little circles. circles. Here are, is a square for the square and compass, like here. This, these are, of course, the uh, pillars of Yashin and Boaz, who were standing at the temple of Pharaoh Solomon. And Solomon, as it says in the Bible, he was married with the daughter of Pharaoh. It was all about pharaohs, the whole book. And you see this a lot at the entrance of a lot of houses, you know, with the ball on top of the entrance. Here's the gate like. And the ball means the world domination, which they are trying to achieve and already have, of course. So that means somebody living here, you know, it, it belongs to the gang. That means if there is a war, or an army passing by, don't kill the people here, don't destroy the house, you can rape all the Europeans next door, that's no problem. And I, f I filmed it in my film, The uh, the Pharaoh Show. Well, this is probably another famous uh, Freemason. And uh, so here, they're all sitting here, right? So the masters, on their elevated level, sitting on their thrones, looking down at humanity and the two dimensional black and white binary playground, who will never understand what's really happening above in the 3D, where the masters sit and who decide over the binary playground in which humanity is imprisoned, unable to pierce through unto the higher levels, deliberately being kept within the gates of the binary system, the invisible prison guards in our own minds and souls. For our master pharaohs here, it's like watching a soccer game with humanity bleeding out in the middle on the binary playgrounds. And with this binary system, the evil ones have infected the human spirit somewhere 
in between the source of souls and the arrival on planet Earth. Watch this impressive interview in this video here to understand the concept of the source of souls. Here's the title, The Source of Souls, Well of Life and Place of the Book of Life, also in the channel Gure, the same channel. And I tell you, it's only the brave ones amongst you who will be freed from the binary shackles keeping you prisoner inside Pharaoh's binary zoo. For the obedient coward sheeple, there will be eternal damnation. It is, in fact, entirely the other way around than those oriental holy books have infected your belief system with. The binary system, it's just in your mind. Be brave and fight back and it will melt like ice in the sunlight. Or do you want to end like this here? Thank God, me, homie Ross, I've got a screw loose in my head that loosened me from the preset binary system, being able to think outside the matrix, enabling me to have run away from the yin yang soccer field hooliganism of the Ordo Abgao. You all know that a computer runs on a binary system, right? It uses only zeros and ones that function like on and off. How does binary work? Binary code works by representing symbols in a way that computers can process and understand. IT is done by breaking the symbols into a numeral system of two digits, one and zero. Apparently, the human brain also works like this, according to many experts. And this is what an expert on computers says about it. I don't think there's anything unique about human intelligence. All the neurons in the brain that make up perceptions and emotions operate in a binary fashion, Bill Gates. The only problem is, Bill, I think your binary system has a little problem with spelling. Intelligence without the G, neurons with the U and the E turned around. Hey, Bill. Maybe that's why mankind has been able to invent the computer. <laughs> because it works in a similar way. That's why most people have a soccer head or a soccer ball head, only identifying the binary system of a football game with one team playing the other team, only two teams. And one can see on the image of the football haircut how they identify with a concept they can barely grasp. But there are exceptions without these limitations within the brain functions, but who are unable to wake up the binary soccer heads? Impossible. Look, even the ball is binary, with black and white spots on it. It's that much the soccer heads love the binary system, because that's all they understand. Here, in this video on Brighton, you can see the pervert Zelensky in ladies' underwear. 
which I don't want to show you the picture here in my clean channel because I don't even want to see the Genta Bender here in my still virgin channel. So here you can see this is Brighton. Here you can do the search. So this is the title here. You just push the you just punch the title here and put it in the search bar here on Brighton, which is a um, a video platform without censorship, or at least you know, for the normal things, there's no censorship. So here's the title once again, and here is the the name of the the channel. You can also punch that in there. And there are also videos how he plays the piano uh, without using it, his hands and with his trousers down. So maybe you understand what I mean. And um, so you just put in the um, here in the search bar here, search, you put piano Zelensky and it will pop up. And here, still on the Brighton.com video platform, uh, when you punch in Ukraine war footage in the search bar. Oh, look, there's me. Ah, oh, that's very well. Thank you. Uh, you did it well. Somebody um, re-uploaded my video, I just saw, which is a good thing. So please, uh, everybody, um, download and re-upload my videos all over because one of these days they're going to disappear in the um, in the censorship video platform where I'm at now and there's also this video here Ukraine war crimes by the deplorable preacher where you see some real hardcore executions uh, on um, surrendering soldiers you know like uh, being castrated by a uh, by a uh, AK shot in the in the testicles and um, knee capping and um, the real deal, you know, things you could you'll never see on the uh, censorship platform uh, where where I'm at now. So go and have a look. So it's it's. Um, it's it's you know the we have a binary system in our heads you know and people can't think out of the matrix and uh, which is the uh, the soccer game uh, dilemma the, the, there are not just two parties this guy here well, I'm not going to tell you his name here because it's probably my video gets censored if I do um, well, he doesn't really think outside of the matrix. You know, he's also in the binary system and he's saying the uh, Putin is good and the um, and the Ukrainian uh, Zelensky is bad. And uh, which is the binary system, the 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 uh, it's the uh, yin yang conception, which we have in our heads and we have to loosen up some screws, you know, and reset our own system. You know, it really is like this, it really is. So, um, but the images are interesting. You know, it reminds me of the things I I saw in my wars in in Southern Africa. Why do you think Putin has let this picture be published with a black cross on his forehead? Putin. The man who controls the media in Russia. Why did he want to present himself with a black cross on his forehead? Well, because the black cross on his head represents the black cross of the Teutonic Knights, thus giving away to all the initiates in the world is allegiance to the Nazi Templars. It was on purpose he showed us.
Here you can see Gadirov, the Chechnyan warlord, fighting at the side of Mr. Putin, the Teutonic Putin. And he has an octagon of the Knights Templars, the Nazi Templars, on his cap, meaning that this organization is by the same Nazi Templars as Mr. Putin is a Teutonic Knight. And maybe those who say, well, no, the octagon is Islamic. So we might ask ourselves, is Islam maybe also an invention by the Knights Templars, as there was in fact several Knights Templar Arabic orders, like Salahuddin or Saladin, he was part of. So how come? There are these Kadyrovsky Chechnyans fighting for the Russians and fighting for the Chechnyan enemy. After the genocide, the Ruskies and their Mr. Putin have executed on the Chechnyan people during the two bloody Chechnyan wars that were in fact no wars at all but mere bloody terror campaigns by the Ruski army on mostly unarmed civilians. So here you see the first Chechen war, a uh, hundred thousand Chechnyans killed and the second Chechnyan war was even worse with far many more people murdered and Mr. Putin was responsible for this all. So how is it possible that the Kadyrovsky Chechnyans are fighting for Mr. Putin now? There's something very suspicious in the air, something very fishy and rotten going on. So here he is again, Kadyrov, a pal of Mr. Putin. And again with an octagon symbol here, which is octagonal. And I know about symbols, I can promise you that, and I know these symbols, it is Nazi Templar. And the war he's leading now in Ukraine, it is Nazi Templar stuff, and it's against the peoples of this earth, innocent people being slaughtered by these guys here, the Nazi Templars. And there is also a circle in here, you know, in the middle of the, uh, the crescent moon here, which stands for the compass. And here I see a square. So it does say square and compass. And there is the octagon. And the Freemasons, the square and compass, they come out of the octagon of the Knights Templars. And this is why he is pals with Mr. Putin. This guy is an enemy of the Chechnyan people. The Kadyrovsky are typical Lebensborn, where just as these German children, Chechnyan children, have been kidnapped and abducted to be trained as perfect, obedient, brainwashed soldiers by and for the octagon of the Nazi Templars from the Alps, as you can see here, the Alps, which we can see happening again in the Ukraine, where boys are kidnapped to be never seen again, and girls are raped and tortured. Yeah, I read it for you. Russian forces kidnapped 2,389 children from Donetsk and Luhansk, U.S. Em Embassy says. The U.S. Embassy in Kiev cited Ukraine's foreign ministry as saying 2,389 Ukrainian children have been illegally removed from the Russian-controlled territories of Luhansk and Donetsk, oblast and taken to Russia. You don't believe it? Well, I believe it. And you know why? because they're doing this again and again and again, these Nazi Templars. This is the Lebensborn program. 
it's like in this American film Soldier from 1998. Here, I read you the plot. Here you can see the image. It's with Kurt Russell. Interesting video because it's the reality, as in many movies. Here's the plot. In 1996, so uh, a part of a new military training program, orphaned infants are selected at birth and raised as highly disciplined soldiers dedicated to a holy military routine. They are trained to be ruthless, obedient killers without any morale, code of conduct. You can see what it is. Code of conduct is a set of rules outlining the norms, rules and responsibility or proper practices of an individual party or an organization. And any deemed physically or mentally unworthy are executed. Survivors of the training program are turned into emotionless, dedicated fighting machines with no exposure to or understanding of the outside world. Well, when I when you read this, when you hear this, I see I see the Kadyrovsky, because also in Chechnya during this Chechnyan wars, um, Russian terror, many children have just vanished and disappeared. They were kidnapped by the Russians, and now you know, like twenty years later or thirty years later, we got this. Um, this, these terrible Kadyrovsky uh, machines, you know, like emotionless, yeah, it says emotionless, dedicated fighting machines. The same with these Wagner boys, you know. They make soldiers, you know, I mean, that's what they do. And this is exactly what's happening today. As many Hollywood movies, it's like a, uh, it's like a preview you know, what's going to happen or what, what they're going to do with us. Yeah. Well, this is exactly what we are seeing today with those Kadyrovtsi who are hated by real Muslims and by real Chechnyans as well. So here we, this is Kadyrovsky with his octagon here, yeah? Knights Templars, right? This is the sun hieroglyph, which I filmed you in in the Pharaoh show and many other. And here, the circle stands for the compass. So where's the square? Well, here it is, it's a big square here. So it says square and compass with another sun hieroglyph in it. And here's the concept of four, one, two, three, four. Uh, it's, it's, it's Masonic. Here in this, vid in this uh, picture here, you can see it even better that it is the sun hieroglyph as, as I filmed it in many videos, filming it on buildings horizontally, vertically. Well, I mean, what, what is this symbol doing here? Has it, has it got anything to do with Islam or something? And look, it's like Adolf, he seems to be saying Heil, you know? Hitler and the Nazis did this with the Lebensborn and the Hitler Youth, for, you know, the, the Hitler Youth in 1933. And I read it for you, how successful was the Hitler Youth at indoctrinating children? Well, we all know this by now, they were very successful. I'll let you read the rest yourself. Yeah, you can see Mr. Hitler and the Hitler Youth so this is the true face of Mr. Hitler sending children into the war. The boy here must be like 10 years old. This is Mr. Hitler. This is what he did. Another liar like Putin and children disappearing in the Ukraine. Nazis have always been doing this. Wakey, wakey people. The Brits did the same with the Boy Scouts. I'll read it for you. February 22nd, 1857. 
the birth in Paddington of Sir Robert Baden-Powell, national hero of the siege of Mafeking during the Boer War. His innovative approach to the situation kept morale high and his experiences led to the founding of the Boy Scouts, you know, to make perfect little obedient soldiers. And here, yeah, Fleur de Lis of the nobility, you know, all these nobilities, a Swiss cross on his chest and everything. Well, there are the famous child soldiers, or rather infamous child soldiers of Africa. The Islamic State did it, and they're still doing it. These type of phrases, uh, I can't pronounce it for you, because then my, the machine will recognize it, and they will take off my video. Uh, the same sort of things the Kadirovtsi guys were being taught, the same as the Hitler Youth, they also had like similar phrases being taught, and um, it's, it's always the same, you know. So now children disappearing in the Ukraine, and well, they're going to be taught these kind of phrases, you know, for the next wars. The Romans did the same thing, taking away little children of the European tribes in order to raise them as legionnaires who then got fed by the beast so to speak and making the swiss god out of them in rome pharaoh has always been doing this making perfect little soldiers by making them and building these children from start like the Swiss pharaoh here is taking away children from their parents to make obedient little Swiss banksters out of them. On the NATO side we also have an enormous conflict of interest with the Western military industrial complex earning loads of war money war is business with all those high-tech and very expensive man-pad missile launchers by the military industrial complex huge cargoes of weapons being sent to the ukraine like a present from the West. Ballistical jackets, drones, tanks, airplanes, and other high tech goodies. Here, I quote for you Biden says US is answering Zelensky's plea and warns of long and difficult battle. Raytheon and Lockheed Maidonos need that long and difficult battle to rake in trillions of defense dollars. The military industrial complex. War is business. The Ukraine even responds with unthankfulness, saying that the West, the NATO and the European community don't help the Ukraine enough. Zelensky even said that the NATO is weak and confused. He says it's weak, you know, it's all bent like. Why? Because our leaders want more war from both sides, from the Russian side, from the NATO side, from the Zelensky side. They want war. Wow, the Ukraine gets all the help in the world and then spits back at the helping hand. And look, the military industrial complex, they even make t shirts saying, Well, this guy, Zelensky, said, I need ammunition and not a ride out. So, who likes him saying this? 
that he needs more ammunition. Well, these ones, of course, the military industrial complex. This is Octogon, and they want perpetual war. It's going on for 2,000 years. The business of war. Octogon. Switzerland, where all the money goes. War. Good for few, bad for most. Red wine for few, red blood for most. War is good business for the military industrial complex. Therefore, saying all over the news all the time ukraine needs more weapons this is kuleba the ukraine foreign minister the military industrial complex is happy with this guy yeah ukraine needs more weapons if you wonder why the taxes are going to raise soon, well, you know why. Like in any business, you know, and it is a business, they come with excellent selling arguments. And the same foreign minister even says on what Ukraine needs, weapons and sanctions, and the rest will be done by the Ukraine. This is a selling argument. You know? Give us the weapons and, we, and we'll do the rest. You know? It's business. This is a selling argument. It's business. The military industrial complex. It's pure business. The man pad goodie for the Ukraine is short for man portable air defense. PAD, standing for Portable Air Defense, operated by one man, man PAD. ATGM means anti-tank guided missile. So I quote, biggest batch ever delivered. US delivers 20,000 ATGM and man pads. The military industrial complex is happy. The West's man pads versus Putin's warplanes. But it, so, it should stand here. In fact, the military industrial complex's man pads. So, who's gonna pay? for all the military industrial complex high-tech presence to the Ukraine, huh? So who's gonna pay for all the military industrial complex high-tech presence to the Ukraine, huh? So these statistics are from an article from last year. 2021 and last year they were all already planning the rise of the taxes in england so this is from england britain with about 300 percent you know going up from one uh was it one billion to two and a half so there's a rise of 250 percent or the rise is actually 150 percent more and um, and the rise was supposed to be coming in March 2022. So this means they knew that the Ukraine war was coming. They planned it. You know, you can check it out yourself. You know, just follow the money, and and you get to all their crimes. You know. The March 2022 plans is a rise of 150% more in taxes in the UK 
And I guess the US is the same and the rest of the NATO countries, it's the same. They want to bleed us out, you know, to get the money into the military industrial complex. It was all prepared from both sides. From the Russian side, as I already explained to you in my videos, and also from the NATO side and the, the, the EC, European Community side. Because the enemy is on, is in both sides. It's the enemy within. You all understand what this means, right? It means you're screwed. So also here, it's better to have a, a screw loose in your brain so you can get out of the binary system and understand what's going on instead of paying taxes to the nobility. So the taxes are going to rise again with the government's military industrial complex smiling and getting more money for Pharaoh's offspring while Europeans bleed again. Then the Latin letter Z or Z in American on the Russian tanks, trucks and armored cars. While in fact, there is no Z written that way in the Russian Cyrillic alphabet. And here, it even says here, square and compass, the high, higher officers, or maybe all the officers, they're all part of the octagon and the, uh, the Freemasons, of course, they are in military orders and medieval military orders and such, especially generals and colonels and such. So here's the square, you see, and the circle is the compass you can make a circle with a compass and it even is it even says here the concept of three in the form of a pyramid and this the square is the concept of four it has four corners so it says the concept of four and the concept of three it says square and compass together with this one here which i'm going to explain to you what it means so these people know exactly what they're doing i mean wh why else would they put this here and this here, I'm going to tell you. Well, it's half of a Nazi Templar swastika, as I've shown you in this video here. Only, unfortunately, mirrored. But it's the same. It's just coincidental that it is mirrored. I could have just uh, as well have done it from the other side. It doesn't make any difference as people say that the swastika turns right or left. It's uh, nonsense really. And here's the video. From pyramid to Templars cross to swastika on the same channel in QA. Then where is the other half of the supposedly Z swastika? Well, here it is. If you take the N from NATO and superpose it on the not very Russian Z, you get a Nazi swastika without even needing to turn it. It just nicely fits in. You see, here is the famous or the infamous Z on the Russian armor. And their adversary of these ones here, of the Zorro here, it's these ones here, the N. And by coincidence, because these guys are completely nuts with symbols, that they just can't resist it. You know, there's something evil pushing behind it that needs them to put these symbols there, like a dog pissing on a corner. This is my territory, you know. So if you superpose. The Russian N, or let's say we start with the N and we take uh, with the Z and we take the N, you superpose it here, 
like it is, you know, like this, tuck, 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 on the Z, well, you get a swastika, just as I filmed you in that video, only by accident, I took the other way around, you know, I could have just as well, there was 50% chance, because it's really the same thing, I could have done it like this here, you know, with this diagonal, instead of using this diagonal, which is the same. On the, on the other way, you take the Z, you superpose it here on the N, and you get the Z, tuck, tuck here, and you get a bloody swastika, eh? And they know it. So this means on both sides, you got Nazis. That's what it means. And it means they help each other, you know? They, um, they are together. I mean, that's what I've been telling you. It's the same. Zelensky, Putin, they're all Nazis. You know, the NATO, all the politicians, it's all out of the Nazi Templars of the Octagon. Well, here it is. You take the Z and you pull it over the N. The Russians, together with the NATO, or like, say, Putin, because it's not the Russian people, Putin, the Teutonic Knight, with his base in Switzerland, together with NATO and Zelensky, and you get this. You know? He got Putin on the Russian armor, like here, the Z, the Zorro, and here you got NATO. You might say this is far-fetched, but I've shown you so many things, you know, it's, it's always the same. They are, these people are led by demons. It's, it's stronger than themselves. They have to do it. They can't do it otherwise, you know, because they've got this allegiance with evil. So they, they must do it. They get their orders from the other side or from evil. It's stronger than them, you know. And they just want to have all the earthly pleasures and power, you know. So they must do it. So the Z and the N are complementary. Putin and the NATO complement each other, like man and woman, the two sides of a coin, or the two wings of the same bird. Birdie, birdie, remember? The Ukraine war wouldn't even be possible without the enemy within on both sides. It, it wouldn't be working. As they are working together, the both sides, towards their combined goal of the Nazi swastika, standing for a worldwide Nazi dictatorship. You remember, Ein Volk, Ein Führer! Ein Reich, huh? one people, one leader, one empire. You remember, huh? Well, this is it. They are complementary. The Z superposed on the N, and you get this. Look, it's all over the internet. You know, they even say things like this here. Well, I'm not going to pronounce it, you know. I don't like swearing anyway, but I, I would get problems with my channel. Look, here's the Z in a square, half of the, of the swastika. And here, the other guy has, uh, you know, Zelensky. He has a, uh, also on a green T-shirt, he has a Templar's cross. We're being fooled, people. We're being fooled by them. Look, it's all over. The Z, you can buy it on Amazon. Well, they only think about making money. You know, you can find it here, you know, in the streets of in, in, in Russia, like here. Uh, it's amazing here as well. So, you know, so this... The, you know, to influence the people, you know, to hype them up, like uh, make them fanatic, you know. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Wouldn't you like to be one of these, hey? Look at our strong arms and all that. Be Zorro. And they don't even know what it means, hey? 
it's all over. I hear one from the other side. Uh, humanity, humanity. Oh man, these are the sheep, you know. It's uh, for the TV warriors, you know. All this, you know, the TV warriors, you know, go do bodybuilding and drive around in a nice pickup and put on some heavy t shirts, both in Russia and in other places, and play the play the strong man. But they all fear death. Like the Swissies, you know, they wanted to play with me, you know, and put three guns on my head. They wanted to play with death, you know, and think how strong they are. But the ones who did that, you know, they fear death. And I will confront them in a real way, give them the real deal, see how they're going to be shaking. Here, you can see Putin together with a guy who's called Dmitry Utkin, who is a leader in the Nazi Wagner group of those mercenaries and private mercenary group, private army of the Teutonic Mr. Putin. And here we can see the Wagner group officer Dmitry Utkin posing for the American Playboy magazine or something. And uh, what do we see? The tattoos here. Here he's got the SS sign. And here some officer's sign of the SS. What is it? Colonel or something. Or general maybe. And here is the, um, the eagle. The Nazi eagle, which is not an eagle, but a falcon. Only a falcon stays up in the air like this. An eagle doesn't. With the swastika and all on it. So this means we have the Nazis on both sides. Half of them are with the Ruskies, with the Wagner group and their Z symbol. And the other half are in the NATO with its complementary N symbol, complementary to the Z in order to make the swastika. And the other half are with Zelensky, president of the Ukraine, with a Templar cross on his chest where the heart is, which is the same symbol the Nazis had around their neck, calling it the Iron Cross. So this, uh, this is the symbol of the Nazi Templars. And we all know the NATO was founded by Nazi Wehrmacht and SS generals like Nazi General Hans Speidel, Nazi General Adolf Heusinger, Nazi General Reinhard Gehlen and many others becoming high NATO generals. I read it for you. These NATO generals had unusual backgrounds. They served in the Third Reich. Amid the Cold War, two German generals, well, there were more, <laughs> were among the few NATO commanders with direct experience fighting the Soviets, not to mention the Allies. So they fought the Allies as well, and they became NATO generals. Eh? This is the Third Reich. This is the enemy within. Here you can read about it. Well, there's a lot more. There he is with the uh, Hans Speidel, a, uh, a Nazi general, and he has the same cross as uh, Zelensky, because it's all the same. The Nazis won the war. And there's much more, also politicians and all this. I already mentioned a couple of them. You know, Adolf Heusinger, yeah, with the uh, the swastika here and the uh, uh, the falcon on his breast here, and there are many more. Now here he is again, Adolf Heusinger. Well, just before you saw him in a Nazi uniform, 
now you can see him here in a, a NATO uniform. I mean, it's almost the same. The word, even the word, NATO, Nazi, Nazi, NATO. It's almost the same symbol. And I've showed you the origins in my film with these symbols like here. Um, I, I, can make, I can make with these things here, I can make a swastika. I've shown you this. Remember, this. Um, I, I just re-uploaded it a couple of days ago. Nazo. It's the Nazo. Nato, Nato, Nazi. It's the same. And then this, this, this is just, I'm just showing you too. I mean, this film is not really about that. And um, see, NATO uniform with the head of a Nazi on it. Nothing changed, people. It's still the same. The Nazis won the war and they're on all sides. Well, here you can see him again. He's a uh, Heusinger, front left. So here he is standing together with Adolf here <laughs> and he became a general in the NATO can you believe it you know they all got the Zelensky crosses here on the Templar crosses here now oh, here he is oh, nothing changed you know that, that's why the N and the Z it makes a swastika because it's on both sides here you see Heusinger with Robert ne McNamara you know, the guy who, uh, who who bombed the hell out of uh, killing three million Vietnamese. All together, you know, a whole bunch of Nazis. Eh? Yeah, Hans. He, he became Hans Speidel. He yeah, he became the the NATO general. Uh, it's a shame everything, you know. Wakey, wakey, people. Here's the other NATO, NATO general, Hans Speidel. Here you can see him in his Nazi uniform. There you go, with the swastika and the, uh, the birdie birdie. And uh, probably more pictures. He became a NATO general. I mean, you have to take orders from this guy, you know, can you, can you imagine? You know, here's Speidel together with uh, um, Erich von Manstein. I suppose this is Speidel. Uh, my grandfather was killing these guys, you know, or he was fighting these guys. And he, he died because of these sort of guys in 1942. And then, and then they all became NATO generals, you know, like in the Allied army, so to speak. Yeah. Here's Speidel with uh, Erwin Rommel. So I guess this is Speidel and this is the uh, Rommel. You know, the desert fox, as they call them, who got beaten by the SCS. I already explained it to you. And here he's um, Adolf Heusinger. He, he swapped the uniform and he's standing here in NATO uniforms. <laughs> the same guy, I together with the other one, Heusinger. Yeah, we, we're we're still stuck with the same ones, you know. They just swap uniforms. It's amazing. Everything, everything is a lie. Everything is a lie. Now, here's another charming dude. Here you can see him. It was Colonel Reinhard Gehlen, and together with uh, Alan Dulles and the, um, and the and the CIA, they mounted the Galen organization, you know, spying on Germans. You know that there were still the German people. They were still like ordered around by Nazis. Uh, he became the head of the uh, the German intelligence uh, office, or you know, called the uh, BND, Bundesnachrichtendienst near Munich, working for the CIA. I mean, well, we all know what the CIA does, eh? Um, there he is. Oh, he was a, 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 a major general, Reinhard Gehlen, Nazi general. Right, it says, Nazi general, he was not a colonel. 
Yeah. Alan Dulls, they're all in it, you know, William Donovan. Uh, the uh, the paperclip project. They call it the paperclip project because the files were so big, you know, they had to put paper clips on it. They're real big ones, you know, not the normal ones, the big ones. You know, the ones that can hold a horse. You know, that didn't hold the Nazis back, eh? So here's the Galen organization, and it became the Bundesnachrichtendienst, the Federal Intelligence Service. Oh, what a service, eh? It's more like a service in tennis, you know, make a uh, <coughs> giving a big hit, like. And they are in Munich, you know. And what happened in Munich a couple of years later was a. Uh, the Palestinians, they, uh, there was the Olympic Games and some Palestinians, they murdered a lot of, about 10 jaywalkers or more sportsmen. And they're also, they're also in, in, in Munich. Both the Olympic Games were in Munich and the Federal Intelligence Service, the Bundesnachrichtendienst, they're in Pulach. And uh, I mean, why didn't they do their work? I mean, they didn't, you know, they knew it. Of course they knew it. They were living next door. Of course they knew it. It had to be, it had to come like this, you know, in order to get more money and more, you know, so fight terrorism or whatever. It's always something about uh, like this. They, they call it the org. Maybe it's more orcs, the orcs with a C. The org, the Galen organization. And that was well, that was far before the uh, the internet. They already called it the org, dot org, the dot orgs, and uh, yeah, they should have known it about the uh, the Palestinian attack. Who just who just climbed over the fence with all their weapons and everything? They knew it, people. These Nazis, they knew it. I mean, it was just a couple of jaywalkers. Who cares, you know? That's how, uh, that's how Nazis think, eh? The Templar Nazis, the Nazi Templars. Still the same bloody thing. And here's another one. There, there are loads of stories like this. This is the US Army Captain Larry Thorne. They, the American authorities, they, they just changed his name. He was even in the, uh, the Green Beret and Special Forces killing people in Vietnam. The guy just loved killing, you know, in special forces. He's in the German special forces, the, the SS, a Nazi. Here he has again another uniform. The guy just loved killing. So the, the US authorities, they said, well, come on, let's take him, you know, it's all paperclip stuff, right? Um, US Captain uh, Larry Thorne. He had a different name, of course, before. When he was wearing this uniform, he had a different name. You see the same, he was an officer, the same three things like the uh, the Wagner guy had. Exactly the same with this one here and the other one here. So this is just another example how a Nazi officer, he became a NATO officer. The... Uh, the Nazi, the Nazo, the NATO. Um, uh, the, the NATO is a Nazi organization. You know, all the proofs are there, and, and many, many more. Now, watch this symbol very well because it's coming back in a minute. It's the symbol of the, the V of the Nazi Templars. Even Churchill was doing this, V for victory. And it's called. The honor chevron for the old guard, Ehrenwinkel der alten Kämpfer. So the um, the honor chevron for the old guard was a Nazi party decoration worn by members of the SS. The silver chevron, it's a French word, which was worn on the upper sleeve. It's a French word because the nobility, they speak French, right? And the upper sleeve on the right arm was authorized by Adolf Hitler in February 1934. All members of the SS who had joined the Allgemeine SS 
the NSDAP or any other party organization prior to January 30th, 1933, were entitled to wear the insignia, etc. The rest you can read yourself. So it's, um, it's an important symbol. You see here, they all have it. You know, it doesn't mean corporal, you know, because they're, they're all generals here. Yeah? There's Himmler, Reinhard Heydrich, and the rest of the gangsters. They all have it. So it means they're part of the, the honorary guard. And um, so remember this very well because it's coming back in a minute. I'm going to show it to you in order to prove that on both sides, Russian, Ukrainian, NATO, <clears throat> they're all knights, Nazis, and they're just grinding the people in between who are bleeding. So it's called the Old Guard, Ern Winkel, the Alten Kämpfer. That was from 1923. I think this is Ernst Röhm, isn't it? It must be. It doesn't say. And uh, when in Munich, again in Munich, there was the the uh, the uprising with uh, Adolf Hitler when um, Hermann Göring he got shot in in the stomach. So after World War One, 1918, uh, all the nationalist stuff had started really, you know, and they were the Alten Kämpfer, the old. It means the old. The old fighters. So there it is again, all over the Nazi Templar V, which we can see on the Russian armor uh, all over now, in the together with the Z in this uh, uh, Russian Ukrainian war. And as I've been telling you for many years now, the Nazis won the war. And we're still. In the Third Reich, with Templar V's on Russian armor, which you can see here on helicopters and here on armored cars and trucks. And uh, well, there was also a Russian paper clip. They also went to Russia, these Nazis, after the war. You know, Putin spells and all that. that that's where he comes from. You know, it's all Teutonic Knights. Here you see Heinrich Himmler with the V sign of the old fighters, Alte Kämpfer. So this is not a corporal rank symbol here, because this was a the head of the SS. So he was not a corporal, right? like in the American army or, or English army, this is like corporal. American army is the other way around, but it's all Templar symbols. So he was a Obergruppenführer, which means a general. So this doesn't mean corporal. It means Alte Kämpfer, as I just explained to you. And these Octogon Nazi Templars are just crazy with their secret symbols. And they just can't resist this sick, uncontrollable inner drive to use these secret symbols and transmit them amongst each other. Stop fighting each other, dumb people. You must all unite and fight your leaders of this terrible enemy within. You all see the octagon here, and here, of course, the swastika with the falcon. So next to their regular armies from both sides and both under Nazi Templar control and next to the various armies within these regular armies like the Azov, Wagner, Kadyrovtsi, Ukrainian Foreign Legion and others, there's also the Octogon of the Nazi Templars, who swap uniforms and put on run Russian uniforms to shell and kill Ukrainians. And who after that do it the other way around 
swap uniform and put on Ukrainian uniforms to shell and kill the ethno-Russians of the Donbass. It's a two-faced enemy, the enemy within, who kill both parties, both sides of the conflict, so the various peoples will hate each other, which already is the case. Mission accomplished. All the money for the military industrial complex and the octagon enemy within pass through their Swiss Nazi Templar banks. It says on a Swiss t shirt, it's in my DNA with a fingerprint and a Swiss flag. And still, many people say that this is not the fault of the ordinary Swiss people, and that's only the elite masters. Here you can see another popular Swiss t-shirt where it says SS for Swiss. And this is the uh, topographic of Switzerland. Here's Italy, here's Germany, here's France, here's Austria. Proud to be Swiss SS in the Templars colors red and white. So I lived 20 years in Switzerland where the ordinary Swissies hated me and aggressed me with corrupt Swiss cops like Hans Rudi Kuni lying stuffed together only because me I was telling the truth about the Swiss banks. I tell you that those whom you call the ordinary Swiss, they love their Swiss banks, of which they're proud of, and they'll do anything to protect these Swiss Nazi Templar banks, and even terrorize, lie, and commit murder for their masters. And here it says on a cop, I'm not perfect, but I'm Swiss. And that's kind of the same thing. Now, if you think this is some sort of particular Swiss humor, well, it is in a sort of, in a way, but it's not just humor. They really believe this, you know, and they, they present it to others under like the, um, the image of a joke, you know, which is not a joke. I mean, what's funny about this, hey? Eh? They really believe this, that they're better than the rest of the world, you know, because they never had a real good spanking, you know. Two world wars, they were not in it, never in any war, you know. They never had a good punishment, so they really think they're better than the rest of humanity. And I lived there for 20 years. I can tell you, they really believe this, that being Swiss is something supernatural and, and you know, the idea, like the Übermensch, you know, like this Nazi idea of, of being the superior race or something, you know. The Swissies are the product of the 13th century Knights Templar, Lebensborn, Hitler Youth, Gadirovci, forced breeding program of small children with which the Knights Templars started right away when founding their base in the Alps on August the 1st, 1291. It is known that the Knights Templars raped little boys in order to subdue them into the order. Just as we see the Freemason initiated political and aristocratic elite doing today, Jeffrey Epstein, Prince Andrew, Jimmy Savile, the rest of these perverts and here in, in Switzerland having children slaves until 19 89, which you can see in this film here, 
in my channel, Gats of Gats. Or here in this documentary, Switzerland's Stolen Generation on SBS Dateline. And this is very much related to what's happening in the Ukraine, what Putin is doing with the Kadyrovsky Lebensborn. There were little children who, would be, who were kidnapped during the Chechen Wars, just as Ukrainian children are disappearing and being kidnapped by the Russians. And the Swiss did this until 1989, as you can see here in the picture. The children had to do forced labor and they were kidnapped away from their parents. And the Swiss are still doing this today, actually. Uh, but now they only take them away from their fathers, mostly. And um, it's, it's the same thing. It's a Templar technique. And it is related to the Ukraine wars and the Teutonic to, uh, Putin. By knowing all this, what the Swissies did to little children and still do, and which every Swiss person knows, they dare to make cops like this. Legends are born in Switzerland. How dare you? So this is Baldur von Schirach here, this one. And he was the leader of the Hitler Youth. You know, and he's an, he was an aristocrat with the von in between his names. And with his hand on the, on the boy's ass and almost sitting on the boy here. Oh. So if I look at Baldur von Schirach, the head of the Hitler Youth and an aristocrat, I wouldn't be surprised to hear that many little Hitler Youth boys got raped by these Nazi Templar perverts in order to spread the genes of violence into the boys' DNA, making them ready for genocide and company. And when I see this, with his hand here and, uh, you know, making little Nazi Templars out of normal children. I, I have to think of uh, Kadyrovtsi, the Azov, what, you know, there are a lot of children running around there as well. And all the Ukrainian children disappearing, being kidnapped by the Russians. You know, history is repeating itself all the time. This is the Seagate, I can't pronounce this word here, Big Pharma Switzerland and Organized Crime video by the Wolf Clan Media on Brighton. And I found something very interesting in there at 48, 48, 48 minutes, 48 seconds. So now here it is at 48, 48, here it says Interpol. And the video, the Seagate, Big Pharma, Switzerland, organized crime by uh, the Wolf Clan Media. And wow, look at this. So I guess when I found these here called Interpol in the Wolf Clan Media film on the Swiss gangsters, well, I'm sure Interpol won't do anything against the real evil creeping up upon our children from behind, but rather protect the evil of the initiated elite masters and their Swiss base. Because in their Interpol head office in Lyon, in France, in the fancy glass structure of the building, in a grand architectural way by and for the elite and the powerful of this world, they have a huge square and compass protected by the octagon on top, covering it up, meaning that their military wing, the octagon, protects the inner circle of the Freemasons with their square and compass. So you see here, this is octagonal. This is the outer circle. I'll show you more pictures where you can see it's completely octagonal. So this is the outer ring, which is protecting the inner circle. 
This big circle here stands for the compass because with a compass you can draw a circle. And in the cross here, you got like four squares. And here also four squares every time here. Four squares, four squares. And I got it three times here. Four times, three times. It's a concept of three and four. So it says in the middle square and compass, which is the inner circle being protected by the outer circle, which is the, the military wing of the octagon, which is the top of the Nazi Templars. You remember in that video I once filmed, and I filmed it in a um, some a plastic cake form. Um, I try and find it for you. So it's everywhere. You see, it's everywhere. So I wonder if the Wolf Clan Media have have seen this. So. Let's get your teeth out, Wolf Clan Media, the Wolf Clan. We need the Wolf Clan against this here. So here it is again. I found it. I uploaded this like three days ago. And I thought, you know, I saw it somewhere. So it has the same things, you know, the circle here. This is a hexagon. Here, another circle. Here's the octagon. And all around it here is the square. You can't see it, you know, the whole... But I, um, I I made this ten years ago, and I've got I've got a better better video on my channel Hatsafats. So it's the same thing as in the Interpol uh, roof, but um, it it has a different story in a different way. So the square is all around it is a square, and the square that's us the people, um, and the octagon has to. You know, the military ring, which is here in the middle, has to protect the inner ring, the uh, the hexagon, which stands here. This is the hexagon, six corners, which usually stands for the square and compass because you can nicely fit it in here. And, uh, and in, uh, all in the middle is another circle, which stands for the concept of three, which is them, mm, our masters, which is the side of a pyramid, which is the old world order here which is absolutely the middle circle. And then you get the next circle, which is the square and compass, which are the, the Freemasons, the politicians. It's divided by another circle. And then comes the next circle, which is the military circle, the octagon. Then the, we get to another circle to separate it. And the octagon military circle, like the police and the army, they have to protect the concept of three and the Freemasons, the inner circle, the politicians and the one in power from the square which is the people and uh, we all all the way down uh, down at the pyramid the hierarchy of the pyramid where the grass is well where the grass used to be you now it's all sand in the desert right so i uploaded this april the 11th it's just three days ago or four days ago on the same channel and here's the title and all the way down on the earth where it's all happening, right? There's another octagon representing the military Interpol, who are part of the Nazi Templar octagon. So here you see the roof again, and here's another octagon. This means to say that on the ground, they have the very visible octagon saying Interpol, meaning that Interpol is part of the octagon. And the colors are white for the Per Het, White House, New World Order, Horizontal Rule, and blue for the war, or the uniforms of the Blue Gang all together with the tools of the pharaonic goddess Ma'at in it, her sword and the pair of scales. Here you see the sword, the pair of scales here. Here's blue for the war crown. It's all white around it for the new world order, the, the White House, the pair head. Here you can see Obama here walking. And all around it, it's also octagonal, you see. It's so important for them. It's all octagon. 
Interpol is octagon. That's what it says. It says Interpol, and I don't know what this means, you know, PC, police corps or something. And for the ancient Egyptians, Ma'at means the order of things, the order of the universe, but also the Freemason order out of chaos, Ordo ab Gao. Here it says Ma'at, order and justice. So later on in history, she became the sword. She became the Lady Justice with the sword and the pair of scales, you know, the balance, the pair of scales. So the um, Egyptian Ma'at, you see here, you see the sun, Amun-Ra, behind it. The Egyptian Ma'at became the Greek goddess Themis, or Themis, like the river, the Thames, it's the same thing. And here is the, the, the balance, what they talk about. So nowadays, she is a Lady Justice with a sword and here the, uh, the pair of scales. And she is blindfolded uh, today as well. Lady Justice is blindfolded. And it is really blind justice, what we see in the Western world. It's nothing to do with real justice. It's blind justice for the elite. Here she is, Temis or Lady Justice. And the river, you now blind justice, blind pharaonic justice. You know, they don't even see us. And um, in French, the river Thames, it's called La Tamise, like Temis, Tamise. Same origin. So here you can see the sword of Temis, the goddess. And here's the pair of scales of Ma'at and also Timis in the pharaonic colors, blue and white. Maybe this used to be red or it should be red. And it's absolutely complete. Maybe like walking over it, it, you know, it gave another color. Or So the whole thing is by our masters who are not from Europe. It's all pharaonic. Um, they moved over to Greece and then to Rome. It's all the same power, like the Lady Justice. It's uh, from Rome, which we have today, blindfolded, blind, blind justice, which is terror. It's absolute terror, and um, that means blindfolded, blind justice. They don't think, you know. They don't have to think, you know. It's all, all justice matters. Um, are all in the advantage of the master. So that's why she can be blindfolded. You see, we always lose, lose. The people is always the loser in the whole thing. You know? So we're being ruled by the masters, which is in the colors, it's in the symbols, it's in the octagon, it's all over. Pharaohs are ruling over us. So over the earthly Interpol octagon, which you can see here, floats the square and compass in the roof yeah as the invisible powers seeing to it and over that all is the invisible octagon of the nazi templars where it all derived from both freemasons and interpol so this is from the top maybe by a satellite or a drone so on the top over that all is the roof which is also octagonal and then the whole ground is in a circle for the compass with again again a little square here there's a little square here and a circle here it says square and compass well, all over here you can see the um well the, the little squares in it here and there are the uh, the big octagon which we uh, just saw in in glass as well and here's another octagon the whole thing in a circle they just can't get enough of it eh? so i showed one more time what i've been explaining to you so on the ground there's the octagon which we can see a military order with guns and all sort of goodies and drones 
in, a, in another octagon here. You got three st stairs here because the hierarchy, you know, where it's going up, that's them, you know, the concept of three. Must be that, must be three, therefore. And so this is the visible octagon with octagon badges and all that. And over that, you got the square and compass, which I explained to you. And over that, which I've just shown you, in the roof, there's another octagon and the, uh, in glass as well, on the roof. It is the roof. And that is the original octagon, the invisible octagon of the Nazi Templars and their base Swaziland, who rule over the Freemasons, the Square and Compass, and these Freemasons, they rule, of course, over the military order, the octagon. So there are, in fact, two octagons. You know, but it is, it is one and the same, you know, but in their configuration here, um, you know, they, they present it like this, you know. It's also like a spider's web, you know, you get a whole spider's web here on the ground. Eh? And in the sky here, it also has the colors blue and white just as down there on the on the floor you know it's like projecting what's in the sky on the floor and it looks like a whole uh, the crosshairs of a scope where they're aiming at us of course that's why the color blue which is also down here at the floor they are aiming at us with these crosshairs that's what it means you know through the white, the New World's Order, the White House, and blue for the war. And it's not only in the sky, it's also down here. The crosshairs aiming at us, the pharaonic crosshairs. And Interpol is, of course, an organization by and for the elite to control the slaves. Here it says Interpol Global Financial Crime Task Force. And here the logo of Interpol. Well, I've never ever seen them do something against Switzerland. Their Swiss banks or their Swiss pharmaceutical companies. Never, ever. And I dropped three complaints at the French court against Switzerland and their banks and everything. I never heard anything anymore of it. And I was in the same country where this Interpol is. It's all a joke. Interpol protects, of course, the mafia. Interpol protects the nobility and its various rapists, like Prince Andrew and others. Interpol protects the corrupt politicians and Interpol will always protect the motherland of the Octogon, Switzerland, with its powerful Nazi Templar banks and its highly criminal Swiss pharmaceutical companies. And here you can see Interpol organizing an international forum called Technology Against Crime, with a lot of circles in the logo representing the compass. The square in the letter T, a pyramid in the A, and again the colors blue and white. Blue for the war and white for the New World's Order, Perhet White House. So here you can see all the circles standing for the compass. The square is here. And here's a pyramid with a Templar V as well, the upside down, which we also see. And here are the ones who are organizing it. Technology against crime. They use the minor slaves' crimes as a pretext for total control and its 666 chip under the banner of technology against crime. Lyon where the Interpol is means lion, the symbol of the nobility, and Lyon is the old capital of France under the Roman Empire. So here you can see the coat of arms of uh, Lyon, 
There are three times for the concept of three, fleur de lis, and blue for the war. And uh, here are the other two pharaonic crowns, red and white. And here's the lion. There never were any lions in Europe. So under the Roman occupation, um, they called it a Luc Dunum. Um, Lyon, and that was the uh, the capital of the Gaul, the uh, the Gaul, the Celts, the Celts in in France. They were called the Gaul, and the capital, the Roman capital of France, was uh, Lyon. So it's um, it has a lot of history, and um, it's completely in the middle of France. So um, the Interpol they didn't search the place where to put where to put themselves uh, by accident you know. they are everywhere like i filmed this here on a house next door in the village i had been staying this winter i got at first attracted by the owl representing the roman goddess minerva the goddess of wisdom, usually depicted with the owl. Therefore, another symbol the Freemasons use. When I looked further, like here, it said Venus. It says Venus. Another Roman goddess and a representation of the Egyptian Isis. Therefore, there's the bird for his son Horus, the falcon, depicted twice in order to show the bird with one eye missing, as Horus had lost one eye. Then there's a long horizontal line for the horizontal rule of the New World Order with a little vertical arrow on this timeline representing the old feudal vertical rule back in time. And at the end is the sea, probably standing for the Roman sea, meaning a hundred years for this timeline. Underneath the timeline, it says I and B, the letters I and B, for the three Masonic pillars, Yashin and Boaz. And in Latin, the J was written as an I. In the middle of the symbolism is the octagon, standing for 1743 on the timeline. Because the sign was made in 1843 at the end of the timeline. So here it says 1843, which is here at this in this period, C is 100 years until here. So we get here in 1743. So what happened in 1743? After this, we get another 100 years in, seven, in 1643. So what happened here? I'm gonna explain that to you. Here's I and B for Yashin and Boaz. Here's the octagon, what it's all about. It says Venus, and here it says the bird, it shows the falcon here with the eye missing, and here it has the eye. So why is that? Why does it have the eye here and not the eye here? Well, because Horus, he had one eye missing. He lost it in a battle with Set, or Set on, Satan. So in a little village, you know, they're everywhere. You find things like this. You don't even have to go to big towns like Lyon and where the Interpol is and, and Paris. No, it's even in little villages, they're everywhere. So here is 1743 in France. It says in French here, but that doesn't matter really. So let's have a look what happened in 1743. So what happened in Alsace, where the clay table is at, in 1743, 
where the octagon is at. Well, on September the 13th, there was the Treaty of Worms, when Alsace was given back to France. Here it says, Le 3 septembre, well it says the 13th of September, the Treaty of Worms between Austria, Great Britain, Saxony, Hanover and Le, uh, the, the Piemont. Um, they, um, well, they gave back um, Alsace, Lo Lorraine and uh, Le Trois Évêchés to France. So Alsace went back to France and this clay table stands in Alsace and it's exactly where the octagon is in 1743. So here you can see the Treaty of Worms in 1743 and it was signed on September the 13th, 1743. So this in Alsace, uh, it's a very important date and it's all related to the octagon. And that's why this date says exactly at the clay table where the octagon is. Because 100 years before that, during the 30 year war, the Swiss mercenaries of octagon, they murdered the entire population of uh, not yet Alsace, but uh, of the, uh, the Upper Rhine and the Lower Rhine, as it's called in French. 95% uh, of the population were murdered by the octagon. And um, I fear the people of the clay table, they know it, they are initiated. You know. On top of that, the Treaty of Worms happened on a Friday the 13th in 1743, which you can see here. Friday, September the 13th, 1743. 43. And Friday the 13th is very much related to the octagon of the Nazi Templars who were rounded up on that date by the French King. I read it for you here. On Friday, October 13th, 1307, the Templar Grandmaster Jacques de Molay was arrested. King Philip IV of France ended the Knights Templars on Friday the 13th, and ever since Friday the 13th has been known as a bad luck day. Here's the Knights Templar cross. Therefore, here the octagon for Friday the 13th of September 1743 on the timeline. So here, the octagon it stands for 1743 because this c 100 years from here to here the c stands for 1843 the end of the timeline so this is friday the 13th and friday the 13th is octagon so from 1843 where the c for 100 years is to the octagon is 100 years on the timeline then back 1643 from the octagon to the downward arrow arriving in the middle of the 30 year war from 1618 to 1648 when swiss mercenaries butchered 95 percent of the original population of the non-alsatian alsace so from here to here it's another 100 years so from 17 Friday the 13th, 1743, so here we arrive in the middle of the 30 year war, which is also very important for this region. So we arrive in 1643, so it's two times 100 from 1843 minus 200, you get 1643. And I'll tell you what happened then. And exactly in 1643. The French Marshal Viscount de Turenne finally arrived in Alsace, but it was too late, as everybody had already been murdered by the Swiss mercenaries. So here you can see the Viscount of Turenne, there he is, and I'll show you that. 
the timeline here. Here's the coat of arms. It's quite interesting. Of course, there are the three dots here, which you also just saw on a Russian tank. You know, the concept of three, like this, or maybe the other way around. A lot of fleur de lis. How many are there? There are eight. Castle, of course, the crown. Uh, to and and um, so Marshal of France. Yeah, he was the uh, the Marshal of France, and here it says he began Turenne began campaigning in June 1644, crossing the River Rhine at Breisach. So I I am at the uh, River Rhine here. And uh, so 1643, he was um, here where, um, in, in Alsace at this place where the, the, the clay table is. And he slept in the village, uh, which I already showed you in a video, um, where, the, um, where the Pope Leon, where he was born. And he was also the Pope Leon. He was the. Um, he was the son of a uh, of a duke. So, if you look at the timeline again, it it really matches perfectly. You know, sixteen forty three, and then hundred years later, you get to the octagon in seventeen forty three, Friday the thirteenth, and then at the end, eighteen forty three. It it matches completely with the timeline on that uh, clay table. It's amazing. So there is a Turenne. There's a lot of other aristocrats. Uh, there he is, Turenne, the Viscount of Turenne. And in fact, right next to the very interesting clay table is La Butte de Turenne, the hill of Turenne, which I filmed at the end of this video here about Régine's return to the source of life. And Régine and family live 100 meters from the fascinating clay table with the octagon timeline. So here you can see La Butte de Turenne. There's even a shield here somewhere on this side here, who was here in 1643. And he slept in the village of uh, Egisheim, where I filmed the uh, the Pope Lyon, which I'm going to show in a video after. And here's the title, The Source of Souls, Well of Life, Place of the Book of Life, on my channel, Gure. So about the near-death experience of Régine in Alsace. And here, La Butte de Turenne, the Viscount of Turenne of 1643, the beginning of the timeline. I guess the Octogon Interpol of the Lions Town are not going to investigate the crimes around the Octogon timetable because it's all part of the same pharaonic gang with its crosshairs aimed at humanity. I'll turn the crosshairs back on you, Swissy, and your neutral crime syndicate. Eh, hey, Swissy?